For drive assemblies, can we go over general alarms like overcurrent, DC bus issues, etc., and what each alarm might indicate? For example, DC bus issues could mean bad bleed resistors. Yes, absolutely. So an overcurrent, uh, would, let's start with that one. because so, there's, there's a whole bunch of directions we could go here, but let's, let's focus on just a couple you mentioned here. So with overcurrent, overcurrent could be an indicator of a lot of things, all right? We, we could have a brownout or a voltage drop scenario from the grid that could cause some kind of overcurrent issue if it was a sudden drop, um, which was gonna cause our current to spike. Um, we could have a, a megging issue. You know, maybe the, the stator insulation is beginning to break down and having trouble. So that could be causing a leakage to ground, which would eventually show up as a, a potential overcurrent if it got severe enough, right? Or uh, some drive assemblies are smart enough now that they'll actually just detect, hey, a, uh, we've got a earth ground scenario here. I'm not going to turn on like it. So the, basically the drive is essentially making the motor, if you will. And it sees that it has a, a path to, to earth or ground uh, before it even outputs to the motor. So at that point, hey, I'm not going to blow myself up intentionally here. Uh, something like that. So um, that could be another overcurrent condition. Your load itself could be an overcurrent. So there's going to be some cases where especially if you're in a pull down scenario so this will be something to be mindful of is during a pull down you've got you're way above set point you've got a lot of heat in your loop and you're trying to pull that down well the chiller itself if it doesn't have a built-in pro pull down programming or even if it does they're not always programmed um it you want to be cautious to have that chiller fly to full peak and pull and try to pull that down because what will happen is it can push up against the current limit safeties and because there's so much load trying to in the chiller running at absolute maximum to try to process that down it actually has a lot of call it instability and it can have these uh, spikes and those spikes can be enough to push you over a uh, a current trip and you'll trip on overcurrent even though all, all that went wrong was that you had a really high load and it was trying to pull it down so in a scenario like that if you're coming up to a loop that has a, a, a hot pull down that needs to happen and it doesn't have a built-in pull down cycle uh, just a, a quick and easy lower the current limit let that pull down get close even within just a few degrees of set point right if you can just get it to where the chiller is coming into set point and things are starting to settle out um, it's going to take longer you know technically to get there because you're not letting it go to absolute maximum but even even just a current limit of 80 90 percent is still better than say leaving it at a hundred percent where it's going to start pushing that upper uh, safety limit so if you could do that 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 might prevent a overcurrent issue um Let's see, uh, with a centrifugal, an overcurrent could be the IGVs at startup are open too much. Now, the Danfoss Turbo Core specifically does open the IGVs prior to start. That's a different uh, scenario. But most centrifugals want the IGVs to fully close, the inlet guide vanes, to fully close to help keep motor current down at startup. And there are some cases where they will trip out on overcurrent if those aren't closing properly and, and you'll never be able to get past that startup phase uh, to get the the motor online so there could be something with the drive assembly right so if there's a drive assembly issue that could trigger an overcurrent condition a surge can trigger an overcurrent condition uh, because of the the heavy fluctuations that it causes now that's back into a centrifugal land if you're dealing with a screw and you're going into overcurrent you may be having a unloading issue uh, now this would be saying you have a slide valve specifically so variable speed this wouldn't necessarily be the case but with a um, uh, with a, with a slide valve those can stick and they won't always slide smoothly and allow that compressor to unload which basically limits how much of the screw bolts are actually compressing at a given time so if that slide begins to stick it can get stuck in a loaded state Heck, I've also had it to where somebody miswired in the panel, uh, just genuine mistake or otherwise, and they wired the um, uh, one of the solenoid coils for loading straight to 
the 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 output uh, source. So it was just constantly getting voltage to load up, and they just stayed there. And so it severely struggled every time it tried to turn on because it was just going straight to a, f a full load amps and then tripping off. Not supposed to do that, right? So it could be something as simple as that uh, that's causing a uh, an alarm issue. And we do have some um, we do have some screws now that are on drives. Uh, you, by drive, I'm assuming you probably mean variable speed drive, even though a drive package could be a number of things, such as um, soft starters and such. But we do have some screws that are coming out with both. They'll have a slide and a variable speed, and so they'll use those in conjunction in different ways. You know, Daikin has their way of doing it. Dunham Bush has theirs. But the same kind of theory can still hold true to it to a degree where if that slide is having trouble then even though it's on a drive it could be causing a a current issue because it's a slide may not be unloading the way that the chiller wants it to now if we move into dc bus yes um so if we're not if we're holding voltage on the bus then the bleed resistors are likely not working and because they're not working to drain the bus down, that will trigger a DC bus fault uh, of, of some kind or DC voltage fault, just kind of depending on your manufacturer, where the drive has de-energized, but the DC bus is not draining. And that has to happen within a certain period of time. Otherwise, it sees that as a fault condition. Now, you, you could also still have a um, DC undervolt, DC overvolt condition, those are probably going to be something either with the, the capacitor bank or the SCRs or IGBTs, depending on the style of drive. So that's something to note is our rectifiers that we're using nowadays. We used SCRs, silicon controlled rectifiers, for a lot of years. Um, and I'm, we're seeing a transition, especially I would say with York, where they're no longer using an SCR. They're using an IGBT, insulated gate bipolar transistor. So now we're using IGBTs to not only rectify coming into the, the DC bus, but then we're also using another set of IGBTs to output a PWM to the motor for variable frequency. So either way, that rectification device, whatever that is, could be causing an issue. And we're seeing that in our uh, DC bus having um, sudden spikes or, or low dips for some reason. Uh, so that could be another the thing part of my point this is a this is a pretty broad question and it's not a bad thing um but there when we start talking these drive assemblies uh there are an abundance of conditions and this is we start say say we just kept it as simple as a xl uh or a um a y delta starter you know those are probably some of the these are these simplest forms of, of a drive package we have there's a, quite a lot of various conditions that can cause a lot of different alarms. As we scale that into variable speed applications, that just becomes infinitely more of trouble because we've got a lot more control boards, a lot more electronics, there's a lot more happening in that uh, electrical circuit. So just, yeah, a lot can go wrong with a drive. Um, but hopefully... Hopefully that gives you something more to kind of go off of, specifically hitting on your overcurrent or DC bus issues, and, and that gives you some kind of direction to go with of, of some kind. Uh, I do see, uh, wouldn't snubbers help bleed down the caps? Not in my experience, no. Snubber, so snubbers are kind of a, um, just like the capacitor bank itself on the drive assembly is a type of filter. Uh, and when I say it's, it's it's doing a couple of jobs. One, it is filtering the DC bus, helping give a cleaner, more pure DC. It's, it's not pure, but a more pure to the uh, inverters. Okay, so you're leaving IGBTs, those are your inverters. So they are filtering in that way. They're also holding a bank of power to give a more, and it's part of the filtering process, but to give a more even distribution. And, and then we can use that power bank that's stored in the capacitors to help us during the coast down cycle uh, with some of these compressors so that uh, like with the mag bearing we can 
gently ease down something along those lines instead of just hard stopping. So the capacitors are, are being used in that function. Now I, I scale that to the snubber side. So if you don't know a snubber is the, they're these little capacitor blocks um, that are sitting on the, um, the inlet side of the inverter coming in from the DC bus into the inverter and then leaving that would be the motor. Uh, and they would, they sit across the positive and negative terminal of that inverter. And basically they are a type of just their filter. You know, they're helping continue to clean that current as it comes into the inverter. But I personally have not seen where um, the snubbers have done anything to affect the actual bleed down process of the capacitors. They're, they have strictly served as just a filtering. And that's where the snubbers themselves are not technically a load. Um, so like the capacitors, because the snubber is a capacitor, by the way, like it's at most of them I see are like a one microfarad capacitor, but they're being used as filtering. Um, and so just like the capacitor bank that we need to drain down our capacitors, well, those are capacitors too, and they're just going to kind of store and hold a charge. So they don't have a load function like a resistor does where a resistor will connect two sides of the circuit and bleed through the resistance to drain that power down via an actual load. If you're not already in Chiller Academy, I'd really encourage you to go check it out. Just think about it, right? Uh, this is what I do full time. I, I've, I've committed, I've stepped out of the field, committed my career to this going forward. This is what I've always wanted to do and to be able to educate, help others and grow and help this industry take step, steps forward. Um, so chilleracademy.com, like I'd, I'd love to be able to work with you over there. We've got a community page. Uh, every, all the lessons have a comment section. That's what I spend a lot of my day doing. If I'm not working on the lesson material itself, then I am in the comments and I'm trying to respond to those as fast as I can, uh, in addition to helping you through email and otherwise. So love to be able to work with you. For all of those that are in the academy, y'all are doing some great work out there. Keep it up. I really appreciate the support and the feedback that you've given. 